Good morning, monkeys. Today I want to talk about DUIs. We just had the 4th of July, and a lot of people got DUIs. A lot of people end up in jail over top of these holidays, man. So I want to talk about a few times that I got DUIs, jail time that I did about DUIs. So for me, it starts way back 20 years ago when we had this crooked doctor named Dr. Fazy that was about an hour and a half away from our city right here. Buddy of mine, the same people that snitched on me, not buddies anymore, back then I guess they were, but the same people that snitched on me in the snitch video hooked up with this doctor. And they're like, look, Jamie, we're going to go down here. You can see this doctor telling this, telling that it's only going to cost you like 50 bucks. So I'm like, all right, bet we roll down there. They've already been getting pills. Of course, we're doing their pills. So when I get in there, this doctor's name is Dr. Fazy, and he comes in and he's like, okay, how are you doing today, Jamie? You say you'll have back pain. I'm like, yeah. Now, you got to think, dude, I'm only like 22, 23 years old. How much back pain can a 22 or 23-year-old boy, man, kid have? Because I was a kid. I was a dumb punk kid. Didn't know nothing. Thought I did, but didn't know nothing. So he puts his hand on my lower back. He says, bend over. So I bend over. He's got his hand on my lower back. I stand back up, and he says, okay, I write you Oxycontin, 40 milligram. I give you 19. And I'm pretty sure he's like 19, 21. He didn't like giving us a whole lot of these, right? He wasn't giving us 60 or 80 of them for a month. It gave us all these Oxycontins. And then I started talking to him in his uh, uh, Valiums. Because back then it was Valiums. Xanaxes have come around since then. But back then it was Valium. You wanted 5 milligram Valiums. So I got him to give me some Valiums. And then we learned about these pills called Soma. Now, if you've never heard about Soma, this is probably a good thing. Because taking Soma is like drinking a whole lot of alcohol it just totally inebriates you to the point of not being able to keep your head up things like that but the thing about some also is if you take it on an empty stomach it doesn't really work that good you have to have food with it so for example many times i would go down do a couple pills fill my script up or whatever and on my way back i would take like five somas maybe a zan or maybe a valium i don't know why i keep saying xanaxes because they're the thing now but back then it was valium so i take the valium i take it like five somas and then i would stop at this 7-eleven the same 7-eleven every time and i would get a cup of coffee or a cup of hot chocolate or something i always like taking hot soup or hot coffee or something like that because i felt like it always melted my pills up in my stomach faster and made them kick in quicker and i feel like this is true at the 7-eleven i would always stop and get this coffee and on the way home if you didn't have any food in your belly it would be like you were chasing more of a buzz but on this particular day i'm pretty sure i had ate something maybe i ate at 7-eleven maybe i ate before that i don't know but after I leave the doctor, after I leave the pharmacy, I do my thing. I hit 7-Eleven. Now I'm on 66, headed home. And I don't remember any of this, but I'm pretty sure I had to be pretty fucked up enough to be swerving all over the road. Because somewhere along the lines, I get pulled over. Now, the crazy part about this, too, is I had borrowed my mom's car, okay? I borrowed my mom's car to drive down to the city. So when I get down there, they pull me over. They arrest me. Okay. Now when they arrest me, man, I don't remember none of this stuff, but I do remember going into the Falkier County Jail. Now in this jail, it's a very small holding cell. There's not separate holding cells, one for each person. It's one little holding cell that's like an overnight thing and it might hold, I don't know, 30 people maybe. But when I come in, there's 30 people in there. There's 45 people in there. To the point that when I lay down at night in this horrible, horrible holding cell, all around me, people are pissing in this toilet. I have to sleep right beside the toilet. Like, all these people are drunk. I'm high as shit on pills. And I don't really remember much of it, but I do remember laying down beside the fucking toilet on the floor to sleep. And I remember several times having these dudes that would step over me to take a piss in this little itty bitty place, man. It was horrible, horrible, horrible. I go to sleep. I wake up the next morning and everybody's gone except for like four people. And we're like, what's going on? Okay, so all everybody else was like drunk tank people. Boom, they just got out because they were just drunk tank. But the rest of us had charges. So we had to go see the magistrate. They line us up. They take us down to see the magistrate. We see the magistrate. The magistrate lets me go on a PR bond. People out here flying planes around in the morning, bro. Stop making a hard noise. Fucking up my video. How dare them fly a fucking airplane while I'm making a video, right? Like, be quiet, dickhead. <laughs> 
<coughs> Damn, sunshine is just beating on me, bro. It's hot as motherfucker out here this morning. So anyways, when I get up and go to the magistrate, the magistrate lets me go on PR bond. When he lets me go on the PR bond, that means everything that I have in property is coming right back to me, right? Like they're going to give me all my property back. And what do you think's in my property? Legal pills. Like they're all legit. Everything's from a doctor. Everything's filled properly. It's all legal. They can't keep it from me because it's not illegal. They give me back my Somas. They give me back my Xanaxes. They give me back my Ox. It's not Xanax. It's Valiums. I don't know why I keep saying that because it was Xanax is after that. But anyways, once they give me all these pills back, now you would think first thing a person should do is find their way home. Now you got to remember I'm an hour and a half from my house. I'm in the city. And the first thing you would think I would do would be to call a ride or get my car out of impoundment because they had impounded my mom's car. So, you know, there's my car in impoundment. No, this is not what I do. This is not the first thing that I do. The first thing that I do is go get a Mountain Dew so that I can eat more pills. This is the problem about addiction, bro. You don't even understand what is going on in your head when all this stuff is going on. 25 years ago, now I can look back on it and just understand that that was absolutely stupid, but it happened. It is what it is. So I get all high. I call my girl, right? And I'm like, yo, come pick me up. I'm right here in front of the sheriff's office in Falkir County. Literally across the street from the sheriff's office, there's a hill. And I got so fucked up, I just passed out right on that hill. Right in front of the sheriff's department. Right after being arrested. High shit. Nodded out. And I wake up to my old lady kicking me. She kicks me, bro. Like, get up, buddy. And she's supposed to be pissed. Like, what are you doing? She had to come down there and get me. So she comes down and I borrowed my mom's car because I didn't want to take her truck. She, she had a truck and I probably had a car that was broke down or didn't run or whatever because I didn't care about paying bills or having anything working. I just wanted to get high every day. That was my life. When she does pick me up, she drives my mom's car and I drive the truck. I don't know why. I guess it's because I was so high that she was probably like, man, I'm going to drive your mom's car because she didn't want me to wreck my mom's car. If we had to wreck anything, we was going to wreck the truck. So I followed her home and I remember we got off at an exit. And I'm just high as hell. And again, man, I was still high from the night before. I got up and took another handful of pills right after that. She gets off of this exit. And I remember coming around the exit and the truck slid one way. The truck slid the other way. And, and you know, this was like, oh, shit, oh, shit. And then I kind of got a hold of that. And then she had pulled over because I was swerving so much behind her. So she gets out of the car. She's like, what the hell? You know, get your shit together. Da, 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 da. And she's like, follow me on. So she, I keep following her. Then she gets off at another exit because I'm swerving. And when she stops at the stop sign at the bottom of the hill, bro, I ran right into her. Like, ran right into her. This is something that some has made me do. Like, I remember just bumping into cars because I would feel like I was stopped, but I wasn't. Bam! I just run into her in the back of my mom's car, bro. She gets out. She's screaming at me. She's fucking pissed. She's like, you go first. So, <laughs> I can't hit her from in front of her. <laughs> uh, I haven't even thought about these toys for a long time, man. So long story short, man, this cost me like, I don't know how much it was. I went down the date of and, you know, spent a couple hundred bucks on pills and I had to spend another 175 to get my mom's car out of the fucking impound, crashed it, crashed the fucking truck on the way home, but we did get home. I did make it home safe. I don't even know how I lived through some of them trips, man. Um, cause I wrecked a lot of cars, like between the Somas and the Valiums and the Oxys. I wrecked a lot of cars. I wrecked my dad's van. I wrecked several of the cars that I had. And I just didn't care, man, you know? Once you get wrapped up in that stuff, you don't think about anything but the high and you don't see the consequences of what you're doing until you can finally straighten up, man. Um, which brings me to another point. Today, man, I'm actually taking someone to rehab. I'm going to pick him up in about an hour. And I'm hoping that he can get off the fentanyl. He's been doing fentanyl for a while now. I'm really hoping I can help this kid out of this hole, dude, because I know what it's like to be where he is being young, you know, 24, six, eight years old, something like that. He's not very old, but I do understand that the point that I'm at in my life and how many times I've been able to quit the certain drugs and sometimes not because I wanted to, just because I had to, it makes me understand more about how to do it. It makes me understand more about what the mindset is that it takes to get past all of that. 
And uh, I'm really hoping I can help the kid out, man. Like, I've been talking to him, you know what I mean? He's talking a good game, but I also know what it's like when you're coming down from several years of that, the emotions and stuff that comes along with your detox. Um, because the detox isn't only the drugs coming out of your brain, it's the reignition of your emotions. And um, there's a lot of things that you don't think about when you're high, and I think that's the reason we get high, is because we don't want to think about those things. And now he has to think about those things, and... I just hope that he doesn't relapse. We hope we can, you know, keep him away from the same old knuckleheads, man. Because the biggest thing when you do get clean is uh, not hanging out with the same people that got you in trouble in the first place. There's no way you're going to go back around the same group of people that are using whatever, whatever drugs, whatever alcohol, whatever trouble they're doing. You're not going to go back around those people and not do what they're doing because that's what y'all do together, bro. That's what y'all do together. You have to find a new group of friends. You have to find a new group of people to, to associate with that are doing the next best thing, the next positive thing and taking the right steps in the right direction. Sometimes that's hard, like, right? Like sometimes it's hard to find new friends. Sometimes it's hard to find people that you can actually associate with and talk to on that level. And sometimes you might feel like that you only have that level with those people that you've been using with and doing all this stuff with for years. And yeah, you do have a connection. Don't get it twisted. You do have a connection. I understand that. But that connection is not a good connection. That's the one that goes to jail. That's the one that, you know, makes your family mad at you or sad with you or upset with you because you're you're just not doing the right thing, man. I don't know too many addicts that can use the type of drugs that that I used or that my group of friends used and still be socially acceptable and uh, you know giving to their community instead of taking from them. because when you're using and you're doing these things all you're doing is taking from your community bro you're taking from your family you're taking from yourself you're taking from everything you're not giving anything and i don't care if that means you give away a pill here or there that don't mean shit you're not doing anything to help your people, to help your community, or to help yourself. So, either way, man, I just thought some of these stories would be cool. I got another really good uh, DUI story about one time when I got some pills. And uh, I tried to run from the cops. It fell right on my face, and 90% of my body was covered in scabs, and I was in the hospital. It was pretty bad, man. But this video right here is already long enough at 15 minutes. So, uh, until the next one, man, don't sweat the petty things. Pet the sweaty things. Ah, did you see that little spittle fly out of my mouth? What the fuck?